Well, hi. I'm getting ready to make a video for you. You're in my kitchen right now. I'm not going to show you over there where the dishes aren't done, but I trust that you're behaving today and you're not giving Miss Bryant any grief. However, it is now time for you to do some science stuff, and you're going to need your science interactive notebooks out. You're going to want to turn to page 54 in them where we created your foldable. Now, if you were absent and didn't create one, you go look over in the basket over by the door, and you, I made them for people who were absent. If you've lost them, you're going to have to make your own. There's white paper over there by the computer. Do it. Everybody needs to be completing these. It's important. I would expect some kind of a pop quiz coming your way maybe next week sometime, so I would do a good job. So the first thing is we're going to look at your foldable. Now, we're going to try to make sure you can read it. Okay, now you all should have written on the front meiosis, cell division, to make specialized haploid cells. Now we're going to find out by the time we're done what haploid means, and if I don't remember to tell you, Emily, who's doing the video for me, is going to have to remind me. So, we only want to look at this this side right here where it says prophase one. Now, I mean, sorry, in interphase one. Interphase one is a resting phase. Here you've got the cell, you've got the DNA that's in the nucleus. It says the DNA in the chromosomes are thread-like and relaxed. Chromosomes are found in the nuclear envelope. I'm reading upside down, so it's hard. I'm going to come around here. Okay, so the next phase and this should be fairly familiar, and um, you should feel comfortable that you should be able to um, pause this as you need to so everyone can get it down. But this should look kind of similar to something we've already done this week. Now the next phase is prophase 1. In prophase 1, the centrioles form. Remember, those are these things out on the side. Chromosomes supercoil, and they start to resemble those X's that you see right here. And they get with their pairs. We call those homologous pairs. Okay? Now... The next phase is metaphase one, and in metaphase one you have centrioles and they go to the poles of the cell. Remember, the poles are the outsides. I always draw them on the sides, just where I draw them. Spindle fibers form, remember those are those little lines here, and they actually attach to the chromosomes and they line up the chromosomes along the uh, chromosome pairs along the equator of the cell. Should still look familiar to you. Now the next phase, you have the spindle fibers contracting, pulling the homologous pairs apart, going to the poles of the cell, they're leaving the equator, going to the poles, and this is anaphase one, down here. Now the next step should also look familiar, it's cytokinesis, remember that was literally cell splitting. Here the cell splits in two, the chromosomes however do not replicate like they did in that other process, do you remember what that other process was that we talked about? On um, page uh, 53 in your notebook, let me think. Hmm, sounded like meiosis, and it is, say it, yeah, mitosis, woohoo! Okay, so, the chromosomes do not replicate like they did in mitosis. The outcome is two cells with half of the genetic information, or half the number of chromosomes, from that parent cell. The chromosomes go back into their nuclear envelope, and this is in telophase one, and you've got your chromosomes. Now, it's half the genetic information, but we're not done yet. Okay, you've got another whole part of your foldable to look at. Now, guess what you go back to? You go back to, ding, 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 interphase 2. In interphase 2, you have two cells. They're both in the resting phase. DNA and the chromosomes are thread-like in the relaxed. Huh, just like over there. The chromosomes are found in the nuclear envelope, but there's only half of the number of chromosomes from the original cell. Interesting, at least to me. So that's interphase 2. Then you have prophase 2, and in prophase 2, the centrioles form, the chromosomes supercoil, and look at that, they're there. You've got three chromosomes, half the number you had over there in prophase 1, it's going to stay that way too. So prophase 2 looks just like prophase 1, but just with half the information, or half of the genetic information. The next step, or the next phase is metaphase 2, again you're working with two cells, the centrioles go to the poles of the cell. The spindle fibers form and the single line of chromosomes line up along the equator of the cell. Look at that. Down the middle. Remember in metaphase 2 you had 6 that I drew. Look, you've got 3. It's half the genetic information. wonder what haploid means. Hmm. Haploid. Half the genetic information. wonder what that means. We'll have to see if we can figure that out. Now, the next thing is, is 
in anaphase 2. And in anaphase 2, the spindle fibers contract, pulling each of each chromatid to the opposite side of the poles of the cell. Chromatid, you say? I think we labeled chromatids two days ago. What do you suppose a chromatid is? Huh, it's half of the chromosome. Half goes here, half goes here. It's happening in two cells. Remember, we started with one cell. We still only have two cells. And then, in telophase 2, these two cells here split into four. They have half the genetic information. So the two new cells, or the two cells are now four cells. We still call them daughter cells, but they only have half of the genetic information of the original parent cell. We call half of the genetic information, you guessed it, haploid. Now, look at me. I moved seats. That's my living room. All right. Where do you think you would find haploid cells in the human body? Hmm. Seems like we had some kind of a special class going on recently where we talked about things you're not going to do for a long time. Hmm. Do you suppose that might have something to do with where you might find these haploid cells? Think about it. If you had sperm and you had egg and they had the full number of chromosomes, when they fused together, you'd have twice as many chromosomes as a human body should have. That's right, haploid cells. Meiosis happens only to create sex cells. So those sex cells are the sperm and the egg in human, and that's really what we're going to be concentrating on for this. Now, the next thing you're going to do, and this will only take a minute because I think Emily's cookies are dinging, is I want you to look below this post on the blog and you'll see there's something in you can come over here Emily and it says compare and contrast mitosis and meiosis as a class you're going to click on this Miss Bryant's going to help you and you're going to click through a series of slides come back over here but before you do that I need you to go into your interactive notebook one more time and on page 55 draw yourself a Venn diagram standing up on top of itself Label one circle mitosis, one meiosis. As you click through the slides, whatever's the same for mitosis and meiosis goes here, and what's different goes out here. It's going to take you a little while. I don't want you copying every word on those slides, but I do want you to really think about how are these two processes the same and how are they different. Now, I expect you to finish the day being good. You're going to go through that next set of stuff that I've got uploaded for you to use. You're going to have a good time with Miss Bryant and you're going to behave. I'll see you on Monday.